So, Operator by Jim Croce. This is from his 1972 album, You Don't Mess Around With Jim. And this was the second single released from that record. And, of course, it went on to be like a massive hit. And there's no wonders, you know, because it's such a good song. It's so well written. The lyrics are just so good. Every line is uh, it's just great. And then, you know, the music, the mood of the music just matches the lyrics perfectly. And then there's the great guitar playing. Um, Jim's part, which is all the finger-picking stuff. And then his partner, Maury Mulheisen, uh, who plays all the fills. And to me, uh, some of those fills are like the hook. They're the hooks of the song. You know, they just make the song. They add so much to it. But you don't want to ever overshadow Jim Croce's finger-picking ability because he's a really good finger-picker. And this song is actually pretty complicated. So, you know, I wouldn't attempt this unless you've got some experience in finger picking. All right, so my demo at the beginning was long. I did the entire song because uh, Maury Mulheisen's fills, there's a lot of variations, so I wanted to make sure I demoed every one of those. Now, Jim's part is the same. You know, once you get that pattern, that section, it just repeats. So there's not really any variation in his part. There's one little bridge section. It's just a G to C in the middle of the song. Other than that, it's pretty well the same thing um, two or three times, right? I'll have chapters in this video, so you'll be able to jump around and go to whatever part you want to learn, okay? So I know sometimes when I'm on YouTube and I see a long video, it's like, oh, geez, you know? <laughs> Some of my older videos are like that because they didn't have chapters back then. But this one will. Also, I'll have a tab for both parts, and it's got every note. So in this video, I can't show you every single note I'm going to play, especially in Jim's part. I can't in Maury's because they're fills, and they're sixths for the most part. They're all very similar, so that would be easier to show you, you know, every fill, exactly how he played it. But with Jim's part, there's a million trillion notes going on, so I won't be able to show you every one. So let's get started on Jim's part. And before I even show you the part, I want to show you the picking, because this pattern is really, really calm, and it runs throughout the song, and it actually runs throughout a lot of his songs. So what the pattern is, if you play a G bar chord, we've got the low E string, the G string with our first finger, the B and the E with our second and third. And then we've got the D string with our thumb, and the G and the B and the E. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, and we finish it off with one, two, D, G. So that is the basic pattern that he uses on all these chords. Of course, if it's on a B minor, you're not going to play the E string. You're playing the bass note on the, on the A string. A minor, same thing. C. E minor. seven so if you can get that pattern you're going to be able to play this song because it shows up everywhere but of course there's more to it than that and I'll show you what I mean so the intro goes like this So we've got that G bar chord, got that pattern, right? And then we go, so that's the D note on A5, open, and then we play the B minor. We finish it off with our thumb on the D string, and then we do this, this slick, just hammering on that D note on the B string arpeggiating down and then we go to the A minor the pattern right so the last note is an open G because we're on our way to do this descending C lick and then we do this 
So pinching on the C note on A3, open E, then drop down one fret on the A string and hit B3. Then open A, B1. And then we play this chord, just arpeggiated, that's like a D over F sharp. Now to get back into it, we're gonna going to slide into this open G chord, right? just a standard G. And we're going to hit the B and the E. And that pattern is a little bit different on this because we're getting that low G an extra time. Okay. And then we've got the B minor again. to the first verse and the verse is like this all right so we've got that low G again twice and then we've got B minor and it ends on that F sharp on the D note and then we've got this descending leg Now, that is the hardest part of the song. And a lot of people get this wrong. They go, like just straight like that. But he doesn't do that. If you watch those old videos, you can clearly see that he's playing an A minor and an A minor over G with a little finger. So he's going. Right? So that's just those pinches. But this last one is... We're going to hit that A note on um, G2, because we formed an A minor there, right? And then we hit this G, like that, okay? And then we double it up. So it's... And that last one, I'm hitting G, B, and E with my fingers and the low G on the E string. Now it continues, right? It doesn't end there, it continues. So we hit that D, and then we've got that little hammer on. And then we're to the A minor. All right, and the A minor is, it's just standard, right? Just that picking pattern. Now we've got this D7 over F sharp, but we don't play the high E. And we just go. So we're going from the A minor. And we go to the E minor. Same picking pattern. Now we do this descending lick over a D chord and we go. <laughs> okay, so D string, and then we got the B and the E. Little finger on that C note, descending, right? B and E again. B and E again. We have the B note here now. And then open A, open G. into the verse. Okay, and that's all just straight repeat. And now we get into the sort of chorus, I guess, you might call it the pre-chorus. Isn't that the way they say it should be? <laughs> I can't say. Um, so what we're doing there is just doing the pattern, right? On the G. And then it goes. 
goes to a C. All right, that's what he's actually playing, but on the recording, the bass stays on G. So if you're playing this by yourself, uh, just stay on the G with your fing uh, third finger. That's what I did in my demo, so. Right, so it gives you that C over G. And I, I just think if you're playing by yourself, that's the way you want to do it. Back to the G. Now we've got a C to G quick change. the G, A minor, and then we've got this, this really fast change. So we've got, that's a C, we've got uh, G, B, and E with our fingers, and uh, the C note on A3 with our thumb, and then we move everything back one, right, while we do this D7 over F sharp. minor. So open E, G string, B and E. Now we go to this B minor and we just pinch the E and the A string. And we do that little on the B, right? And then we go to this note because we're heading to a C chord. Now this is a, a G over B and we move our fingers back so we've got D, G, and B with the fingers, right? On the C it's G, B, and E. Then it's D, G, and B. That's it, that's the end of the cycle, and now we're sort of back to the beginning. Okay, and then there's a middle section which is just, uh, it just goes. So um, let's do the whole thing from the intro, that whole section, before it starts repeating.
So that last G that I did there, it's it's the same basically as that, except you're playing it in open position. into that little G C bridge thing and then it's the last verse and then the ending is the same That's it for Jim's part. Okay, let me change over now and we'll do Maury's part. All right, so this is now Maury Mulhuisen's part and he's got a capo on the fifth fret and he's playing this in D positions, but of course, you know, the capo on the fifth fret, that's a G chord, right? So that's how he's approaching this. And his first fill is this. All right, now, right away, I had a real dilemma with this lick because if you listen to the original recording, you can hear. You can hear that note in there, those two notes. But if you watch live videos of him playing, he's definitely not hitting those two notes. So I'm not sure if he played it differently on the recording or they overdubbed those notes. I can't really say. It's kind of it sort of got me right from the start because you'll see some guys teaching it that lick like and that's okay slow but you know it's really awkward and he's clearly not playing that on any of the videos so what I did is I just went with what he was playing on the videos all right and that's this so I'm gonna hybrid pick this now he used a thumb pick so he was kind of, you know, getting that crisp sound with the thumb pick and then finger picking, right? So I'm going to hybrid pick this because I think that's the best way to get closest to what he's doing because I don't use thumb picks. Okay, so we've got, going to hybrid pick that. It's just up here on the, um, let's call that the, let's just call it the 10th fret because it is the 10th fret. All right. And we're kind of hammering on the 12th of the B string. It's B and E the whole time. And then we've got the 12th fret G and B. And I just do that with my third and little finger. And then we're back to that. Drop down two frets and do that. And now that's followed up with this. And that's the sixth that I was telling you about. And just about this whole part is sixth. So it's, we've only got two patterns, like that and like that. On the G and the E and the B and the D. Now that's followed by this which is just a slide up from the, that's the seventh fret to the eleventh and the tenth of the E and back down two. And then this again. Operator. That again. This again. Then we've got love that one. It's the same things. Then open G and open E. And then we've got 9 and 8. And then open. Okay. 
9 and 8 is on the B and the E. Sliding that up. Then. And then we've got that fill. Now I like to start with my little finger and my third finger. Like sometimes I'll play them like that. Other times I'll play them like this, depending on what's coming after that, right? So for this one, so now we do this again, and this. And here, then here. And then we've got and then we're into the beginning of the chorus and that's going to be like this. And this is where again, you know, getting the tab will really help you because I can't explain every note, but I can play it slow. shape chord and then F sharp minor shape chord and then an A and I'm playing the A you know before I played it like that but now I'm playing it like this play it either way and then and then we've got G then he plays that little lead line the intro. Let's take it from that chorus, so. the intro leg. there is really it's tricky because it's kind of syncopated so from here so you have to just kind of listen to the track to get the timing on that right and then we're again. And 
and then there's a bit of a gap timing wise and then he's like right so it's sliding into that 12th fret on the G and then and then we're back into the chorus Exactly the same. And then the lead. And now we've got the bridge. And the bridge is going to go. And then we're now we've got this lick. Okay, and what that is, we've done that before, but now we're going to go. And that is tricky because you've got to get your, the only way to get that, that slide where you're getting both notes is you've got to get your middle finger and your first finger in the same fret that's on the seventh fret and slide it up. That's tricky. So after that second verse, it was more like uh, there's a big gap there, but this one it's but the same sort of picking on the way down, and we just repeat. Classical there, right? And the lead. Heading into the ending. And this. That's it. That's the end. There's a lot to it, right? And, and I hope the way I've presented it makes sense to you. You know, I, I think if you watch the demo and then maybe have that running in a different window and you can just sort of match up, you know, what I'm teaching against the demo and it'll make a lot more sense. Anyways, that's it for this one. I really hope you get something out of it. This is some great guitar playing. Both Jim Croce and Maury Mulheisen's parts are just great, you know and really, really good to learn. You know, you can really improve your finger picking by learning Jim's part, and you can improve your lead playing and your understanding of those sixths and all the things you can do with them, because he liked to use those. A lot of guys from the 70s were really big into sixth, and a lot of the music that you know you hear is uh, got a lot of sixth in it, especially back then. All right, like I said, I hope you get something out of it, and we'll talk to you next time.